absolutely gorgeous instruments, um, and you'll appreciate sitting closer, being able to hear them a little more intimately. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Gamelon Center One. Barbara Benary is the director. We, uh, they were here a couple of years ago. Some of you may have seen them before. They are a fantastic ensemble. They play uh, newly composed music for the traditional Gamelon ensemble. Um, I know, know we have a special treat today. We have a, a new composition by Lisa Carr that uh, she wrote and will involve a beautiful, beautiful video projection as well. So it's not new, but it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not new, but it is beautiful. <laughs> um, so please join me in welcoming Gamelon Center.
Those two pieces, is this on? Hello, I hope so. Are uh, called Anklung music. You noticed there was a rattle, a pitched rattle that Lisa over there was playing. And this whole small set of instruments that you would find in Bali play this repertoire with only four notes. And uh, you can do all kinds of very fancy things. At the end you noticed there was a place where the two people in the front were doing an interlocking pa pattern like hocketing. And, which is a lot of fun and very fast. You'll also notice that we jump around and change places a lot. <laughs> That's because basically everyone in this group can play all of the instruments. So we take turns and move around. And also the composers of the various pieces will appoint certain people to certain parts for their piece. We're getting onto our new music now. And the first piece is by Jody Kruskal here. You'll notice there's color-coded instruments. The ones that are painted red are a tuning called Slendra, which is five notes. And the ones that are not... Right. Someone play a pelag, will you? That's Slendra. It's more like a D minor. That's called pelag. So we have a double set. It's as imagine if, if you took your piano apart and you put all the black keys in one place and put all the white keys in a different place. That's what you'd have here. Uh, but occasionally we do pieces where you mix them up. Right now we're just doing one tuning at a time. So this is Slendro and this piece is 100% Slendro. <laughs> 100%. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah, I, my name is Jody Kruskal and I'm, um, we do traditional music, um, uh, some Balinese music you just heard, but we also are a new music ensemble and members uh, 
right? We, we write our own, we're composers. And I wrote this next piece, it's called Falling. And in the process of writing it, I realized what it was. And it, rem it tapped into a, a film I saw 25 years ago by Werner Herzog, the ecstasy of uh, ski jumping. So when you ski jump, you know, you, you're at the top of the mountain with the skis and your goggles, right? And you go down the mountain, then you leap into the air, and then you fall uh, along the mountainside for hundreds and hundreds of feet. And this, move, this film had slow motion of the ski jumper in ecstasy as he was completely still and maintaining this very precarious balance of falling and stillness all at the same time. Rapid movement and no movement. Like sitting in an airplane, you're not moving, but you're going 500 miles an hour. Or just standing on the planet Earth as we whiz through space at high velocity being completely still. So that's the imagery of this piece called Falling.
Well, this next uh, piece, this next piece is a multimedia extravaganza piece. Um, it was originally written for one of the members of our community that passed away several years ago. And it's a poem by a guy who's sort of the um, poet laureate of Indonesia. He's very old now. His name is Sitor Sitomarang, but he's still around. And um, Skip's going to be playing this very interesting um, version of a uh, Indonesian, of a Javanese rabab uh, string, which he's made out of um, styrofoam and, uh, and cardboard tubing. And then we'll also have, we'll have some Western, every kind of instrument that can bend um, are, are going to be all of the uh, sort of acoustics. So we have Barbara on the violin and Dawn on the silver flute. We've got a very nice Su Ling and a beautiful um, bass recorder that Laura's playing. And then the other instruments are going to be filled out uh, because, um, because uh, these are not absolute tunings or absolute pitches. We're approximating a C. John's playing this big seven gong. It's a, it's a Paylog seven. And then um, David's going to be kind of noodling about on, um, on his, he's going to do paradiddles. And um, I'll read you the, uh, I'm going to be singing in Indonesian, so I'll read you the English first. Once I thought that where I was, you would be too, my only shadow. Are you really here in this silence, in the cold, empty space of this lonely temple? Outside, I hear the call of a bird worshiping the morning, reaching into this void. If I am here, then I am here all alone, myself and the cold air, unwarmed by the sun.
Turn off the cell phones, please. You heard uh, a number of pieces in the slendro tuning, the five-note tuning, and this wonderful piece that ignores the restrictors of tuning to an extent, because the gamelan is not tuned like a piano. You can only find a few of the gamelan's notes on a piano. So some of us were playing diatonically, and uh, the drone note also was being played in gamelan tuning. And we melody people were kind of going back and forth in between them, uh, responding to uh, Lisa's beautiful vocal line. Now we're going to go to uh, another piece that mixes up the tuning. And then after that, there's two pieces in the Pelag scale, which you haven't heard yet. So this uh, piece is based on a poem by Norman B. Culp. His name for the poem is, the poem is The Commuter's Lament or A Close Shave. And where I found it was, I was switching from a Port Authority bus, but it also could be from the A train, and I needed to get to the 7th Avenue train. There's an underpass that connects the two. It's not a really super wonderful feeling being in this underpass. You kind of can't wait till you get to the other side. But if you look up, on the ceiling, every few, line, every few yards is another line of his poem. And it, it kind of inspired me somehow to write music for it. So my piece is called Port Authority Crossing.
Okay, so gamelan translates probably best as orchestra. If you think about the variations in orchestra we've got um, here in the West, I mean, the, the New York Philharmonic is one kind of orchestra, and then you think to something like the Lawrence Welk Orchestra, which is a completely different bunch of instruments playing very different music, and then even to something like John McLaughlin's Mahavishnu Orchestra, again, you get the same word, but the music that's going to come out, the instruments that are being used are very different. What's in Indonesia are actually three s distinct gamelan traditions with different instruments. So the first couple pieces we played were Balinese, um, interestingly played on a set of Javanese instruments, so that kind of works. Uh, the last piece we're going to play is a, is a Lou Harrison composed thing, so an American composer writing in a Javanese style, so that's normal on the instruments. The piece you're about to hear is from the Sundanese gamelan tradition, or something sort of close to the Sundanese gamelan tradition, which is the West Javanese, um, entirely in Pelog. So uh, where the last piece was using all kinds of different pitches out of both tunings, this one actually strips it out, so we're really just using five notes, not even all the notes in Pelog. And Pernati is a conference center um, in Bali, so some people wonder what that's all about.
You've heard quite a bit about pitches from the other composers. This piece is slow.
pieces from Java. And the other mic. The other one? This one. Hello. Last pieces from Java by way of Lou Harrison. Harrison was a very well-known American composer of the 20th century. And somewhere along the line in his studies with Henry Cowell and other composers who were Eastern influenced, he fell in love with the music of Java, became quite expert at it. He and his partner built a number of gamelan sets in California using mostly aluminum. In those days, it was very costly to actually buy an entire gamelan set from Java and bring it here. So they just made their own and tuned them to uh, basically, uh, what would you call it, uh, just intonation system that he liked. And he wrote in many, many beautiful pieces for these instruments. Buberon is a name for a kind of a finale piece, like a going away march. And Robert was Robert Brown, who was an impresario who started many programs in world music around the country. Thank you. 